Um, so we're going to be talking through the top questions you can ask your cloud backup vendor. Uh, so we originally framed this as the top five questions to ask. However, as we've looked at uh, this topic and started building this content, we realized that there were a lot more questions that you could potentially be asking your, your potential cloud backup vendor to distinguish between what's right for you. So this is actually going to be more than just your top five. It's probably going to be more like your top 20 or so questions uh, that you can ask your, your, your cloud backup vendor. Um, the reason why this is such an interesting topic is because the interest in cloud backup today is very high and it's growing. We recently did a survey uh, to about 900 IT professionals and where we asked them a whole series of questions about their backup, their cloud usage, uh, what they were protecting, et cetera. And while we're still sorting through all the results of that survey, one of the things that became clear is that we've kind of crossed over a line where uh, this is no longer just a niche technology. Approximately half of the respondents today are using some form of cloud offering for backup, archiving, and recovery. And when we actually asked them whether, whether they were using cloud today or not using cloud today, if they were planning on actually adding to their cloud backup solutions in the upcoming year, a large majority, well over two-thirds of the respondents said that they were going to be adding to their cloud solution in the upcoming year. So clearly this is a very hot topic, but there's a lot of choices out there today. Uh, we, when we look at the various solutions that are out there, you have a, a number of options, whether they're from hyperscale vendors like Amazon uh, or Microsoft or Google, whether they're purpose-built solutions, uh, from the backup vendors, uh, or maybe even backup only solutions that go straight to the cloud. There's a lot of choices that are out there. So kind of sorting through that and trying to figure out what's right for you can be a bit of a challenge. And as we talk to customers, they have different needs. Some folks are simply looking for a way of getting some offsite storage of their backups. So kind of replacing what traditionally have been using uh, tapes for. Others are looking for cold storage, archiving, capabilities for uh, maybe for compliance reasons, maybe just for uh, long-term retention. Um, many are also looking for a complete disaster recovery solution, uh, whether it is uh, a DR solution to protect a, a portion of their business or their entire business. Um, it, these are just some of the reasons why when we talk to people, they're, they're looking at cloud backup solutions and cloud recovery solutions. Um, and as I said, there are a number of different types of clouds that you can use for cloud backup and recovery. And full disclosure, uh, Unitrends is a backup company. We do have our own cloud. However, we have a, a, a philosophy here that we sometimes refer to as open sky. We're, we actually have we're one of the few vendors that actually have multiple solutions. We have solutions that are built specifically uh, within our own purpose-built Unitrends cloud. Um, we also integrate with a number of hyperscale clouds, including Amazon and Google, Microsoft and others. Um, and we also work with a number of service providers who are putting together managed service provider clouds or, or um, SSP clouds uh, that you can use as well. And there are pluses and minuses in all these different solutions. So this is partially why we thought it would be good to take a look at some of the questions that you could ask when you're, you're looking at these different solutions. Uh, and there really is no one right answer. The different answers um, are, are, are going to be uh, unique for particular customers. So let's kind of dive into some of the top questions we think you should ask and some of the things you should contemplate, whether they're important to you or not, as you go and you make your cloud selection. We're also going to include a few things that, to be perfectly honest, some cloud vendors may not want you to ask. Uh, because they're going to touch on things that they would probably r rather avoid talking about. Um, so hopefully we'll, we'll, we'll touch on a few things here that are, 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 are uh, a little bit juicy in the industry. Um, so the first thing is obviously around security. Um, security, when you look at surveys, it's usually the number one concern or, or blocker as to why people are not moving to the cloud for some reason. Um, it's, it's been that way for a number of years. It has come down a bit uh, in recent surveys. Matter of fact, I saw a survey from uh, RegScale just a couple uh, uh, weeks ago that it was the first time ever I had actually seen uh, 
security actually not in the number one uh, position for, for, for concerns, but clearly it's up there. Um, and while different um, cloud vendors do security slightly differently, for the most part, most cloud vendors are pretty good with their security, probably better than what a typical enterprise has inside their own, their own environment. Uh, chances are you're going to have an environment that actually has 24 by 7 guards with biometric uh, uh, fingerprint readers to get access into it with you know, surveillance videos and, and all sorts of security, both physical as well as uh, electronic uh, security guards um, in, in place. But one of the simplest ways to kind of get at whether uh, a company is taking security ser serious or not is to ask the question, is your vendor at least SSAE 16 SOC 2 compliant? Um, that's a bit of a mouthful. Matter of fact, I just stumbled through it uh, when I first tried to say it uh, just now. Um, and what this is, is this is a, a statement on standards uh, for assessment and engagement. Uh, that's a regulation that was a credit, um, created by the American Institute of Certified Public Accountants. And it's designed to identify uh, how uh, service companies report on compliance controls. There are a couple different SOCs or service org controls in place. SOC 1 actually deals with reports on controls for financial audits. Um, SOC 2 is actually the one for, for most cloud uh, and enterprise companies that you really want to focus in on because that's what focuses on reporting on controls related to security, availability, privacy, integrity, and things of those natures. So if you're concerned about security, this is one way um, you, you can kind of quickly cut through uh, what's real and what's not by asking your vendor, are you SOC 2 compliant? And if so, they should be able to show you the certificate uh, to do so. Uh, some cloud vendors may require you to actually go under NDA before they will show you that certificate because uh, there tends to be some, some informa information that they don't uh, generally share publicly, such as the physical address of uh, uh, the, 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 the data center and things of that nature. But uh, most clouds that are, are serious about security uh, will be able to give you this, uh, this compliance uh, report. The second question really uh, is what I kind of call the, the Ghostbuster question. You know, the who are you going to call? Um, does your, you know, first of all, if you're talking with a backup company, um, and they're pitching you a cloud solution, first of all, do they have a cloud solution? Uh, and probably just as importantly, is it theirs or is it something that they've farmed out to a partner? Um, and this kind of matters because if you get into a situation where you have an outage, it's the middle of the night or it's over the weekend, um, you really don't want to get into a situation where um, you're not sure who to call. Do you call the backup vendor? Do you call the, 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 the partner who actually owns and manages the cloud? Uh, what happens if there's something wrong, wrong kind of in the integration, if the replication between the two doesn't work? Um, who's, who's, who's to blame there? Who's going to actually work with you uh, to resolve that? So having a single solution from a single vendor means you avoid that finger pointing. It also means you only have to work with one vendor during that recovery event. The other somewhat less obvious thing is, what software are they actually using to build this cloud? Is it theirs? Um, interestingly, if you look at a lot of uh, cloud backup solutions, particularly a lot of DRAD solutions, they may actually be using replication software from a third-party company. Um, and you can get into the same situation. What happens if something goes wrong? What happens if there's a feature that doesn't work quite the way you, you, you said it uh, or expected it to? Um, who do you talk to about that? Do you talk to the cloud provider? Do you talk to the software vendor? Uh, is that cloud provider actually going to be able to make changes to the software when it's needed? Um, so uh, having a single solution um, from a single vendor certainly kind of uh, eases the management and support burden uh, in many cases. Uh, and, of course, since, you know, there were two Ghostbuster movies, um, or soon to be a remake, but uh, since there were two Ghostbuster movies, I'm going to have a Who Are You Going to Call Part 2. Um, and this one really re revolves around who is going to be there um, when you need help. Is there 24 by 7 phone support? And is there a recovery expert who's going to be on staff at all times 
to help me when it matters most, when I actually have that disaster, when I actually need to get that, that data recover or that DRAD system back online. Is there somebody I can call at all points of time who's going to be my partner and, and, and with me to make sure that I can recover? Or is it just the chat support and email support? Do I, is that all I have, is an electronic means to try and get things up and running? Um, there's a wide variation between a cloud provider that's actually giving you that white glove support, particularly when we're talking about backup and disaster recovery. It's things where it's stressful when you actually have to re rely on it. Something's gone wrong. You want somebody who's your partner who's going to be there, not somebody who's just kind of an infrastructure as a service uh, provider who's providing some storage and kind of leaving you on your own to basically you know, build the recovery uh, around it. Um, our next question really is around avoiding what's sometimes known as the cloud trap. Um, cloud vendors, uh, it's typically very easy to get your data into a cloud, um, but moving from cloud to cloud can be a challenge. Um, so if you're concerned about getting locked into a particular uh, vendor, um, you want to make sure that the solution that you're looking at can actually provide cloud choice. Uh, does your vendor offer multiple clouds that you can back up to? Um, that choice will allow you to move from one cloud or another if there's some reason that you want to do, to do that, either for cost reasons or, or, or some other reason. Um, you know, you're moving to a new geography and you want to be able to kind of uh, ha have your data move with you. Uh, as you move to a different country or any other number of reasons why you might want to have your data be able to be mobile between clouds. Um, so having that choice of clouds really can avoid, uh, help you avoid that cloud trap. And it's interesting when you look at a number of backup providers, how many of them actually don't provide cloud choice. They actually lock you into a, either particular hyperscale uh, provider or they lock you into just their own, um, uh, their own purpose-built cloud that they've built. Um, and they really don't let you kind of move between the two of them um, if your needs change. Um, our next question uh, is certainly kind of a, a hot button, uh, for, particularly for cloud. As you know, we're moving to cloud, we're generally moving from CapEx expenses into OpEx expenses. Um, so it's very important to understand the cost and how you're being charged. Um, and while this may seem straightforward. Um, in many cloud solutions, there's a lot of different permutations. There's a lot of different fees. Some of them can be hidden. Um, so you need to understand what you're being charged for. Uh, are you being charged for the amount of protected data? In other words, the amount of data that I'm protecting locally in my production systems, is that what I'm being charged on when I'm, when I'm backing up for the cloud? Or am I being charged based on the amount of cloud storage that I'm being used? Um, and this can, can change the dynamics pretty dramatically. If you're simply moving a single copy of your data between on-premise and cloud, well, those are going to be the same. However, if you're doing long-term retention, if you're doing incremental forever backups, uh, uh, you're going to have the amount of data that's stored in a cloud grow substantially over time. That five terabytes of storage locally may turn into 10 15, 20 terabytes over a couple years of doing incremental backups, um, even if you have a relatively low change rate. Uh, as such, if you're being charged for the cloud storage, your bill is going to continue to grow and grow and grow as the cloud storage you use um, grows and grows and grows over time. The other thing that you really need to understand is, are there any hidden fees, such as for accessing my data? There are a number of low-cost cloud storage solutions that are absolutely fantastic for long-term storage. Things like Amazon Glacier, Google Nearline, they're very low cost. They can be one cent or lower um, per gigabyte per month. Uh, however, they actually come with some, some additional fees every time you want to access the data. Um, many of the clouds also charge you network egress fees. So free to put your data in over the network, but if you want to move your data between uh, uh, cloud locations um, or you want to move your data uh, out back over the internet and back into your building, they're going to charge you a per gigabyte fee uh, to make that data move across the network. And those fees can start adding up uh, pretty substantially over time as well. Um, not saying that any of those particular fees can, can be a reason not to go with a particular solution, 
but you certainly need to understand exactly what your bill is going to look like, uh, not only for the initial implementation, but what it's going to look like over time. Uh, the next set of questions revolve around service level agreements. Um, does your vendor offer S SLAs? If they do, what are they offering them for? Are they offering them for availability and uptime? Are they offering them for recovery time? Um, do they offer you a policy to kind of guarantee data sovereignty to make sure that your data is going to stay in the location, the region, the country that you think it's going to go into? Um, these are all things that are worth probing with your vendor, um, particularly around availability and recovery time. Because in many cases, if you look at uh, some of the, the marketing material, you'll see statements like, we guarantee 100% uptime. Most folks that are in IT realize 100% uptime is extremely challenging to do, if not impossible. Um, so what, what are they really delivering to you? Um, and if you read the fine print, usually what they define as a downtime event um, is uh, – it has a lot of hoops that you have to kind of jump through. Um, the same thing with recoverability. If you're using this for cloud backup and disaster recovery, what's the SLA for how rapidly I can get my data back? How rapidly can I get a critical VM spun up in a DRAS set center? Uh, is there an SLA for that, or is it best effort and, uh, you know, we'll, we'll get back to you? You need to understand what happens if those SLAs are missed. Um, are they going to give you a service credit? Um, how much of that uh, is, is uh, going to be applied? What, what are some of the tr triggers? So as I've talked with various customers, it's, it's, many of them are not looking closely at the fine print on some of these SLAs. Um, and it really can be the difference between um, being partnered with a vendor that, uh, or, or, or using a vendor that is, uh, is going to be there and making sure that your business stays up and running, that your data is protected, uh, and one that is, uh, is going to kind of just be giving you best-case, uh, best, uh, best, case, uh, 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 best effort uh, performance. Um, we're getting into the last couple of questions here before I, I dive in and start talking a little bit about Unitrends, um, but you need to understand what the solution is offering for WAN acceleration. Um, one of the challenges in any, in any cloud implementation for backup and recovery is um, WAN speeds simply have not kept up with the amount of data um, that the typical enterprise has been generating. Compute speeds and storage uh, have grown much more quickly than uh, WAN speeds. Um, so as a result of that, Moving large amounts of data over a WAN from your premise into a cloud can be a challenge. Um, it, it's, even if you have very high budgets and very fat pipes, uh, it can still be a challenge and still can be one of the limitations. So one of the things you want to look at is, uh, does your vendor offer WAN acceleration? Do they offer advanced single pass deduplication to kind of reduce the amount of data that has to be sent over the WAN? Um, how good is their compression? How good is uh, um, their, du their du du deduplication? Uh, all those things can, can help uh, reduce the amount of data you have to send, send over. Um, do they actually support what is uh, called physical seeding? Um, and what physical seeding does is uh, if you have particularly a large amount of data, if you have 10, 20, 50, 100 terabytes of data that you need to get into the cloud, Sending that over a WAN, even a very fast uh, connection, is going to take a long time. It could take days or weeks to basically send that large amount of data over a WAN connection into the cloud. Physical seeding uh, avoids all that. You, essentially, you, you work with the vendor. They send you physical media, usually some sort of physical disk, um, that you put your data on. You overnight it uh, to the cloud uh, team. Their operations team loads it into the cloud. Uh, so over the course of a day or two, you have your initial set of data in, uh, seeded into the cloud ready to, to, be, to, be, to be used uh, if you have an outage. And at that point on, you're just dealing with incremental updates 
to the data that's changed from your environment having to go over the WAN. Um, number of cloud vendors do have seeding services, um, uh, and, and that can avoid that initial WAN challenge. Uh, but you also want to see, do they actually do reverse seeding? Do they have a data shipment uh, capability if you actually have an outage and you need to get your data back very rapidly? Um, again, if you have to get tens of terabytes back over a WAN, that's going to take days or weeks to basically do, um, where if the vendor is able to package that up into a, a physical media, overnight it through, you know, Federal Express or some other carrier, you can get your data back um, uh, the next day and, be, and, and make sure that your, uh, your recovery points are being, uh, being kept uh, up to date and your recovery time objectives are, are uh, as, as low as possible. Um, if you're interested in DR, and we are seeing a great uptake in uh, the number of people who are actually looking to use disaster recovery as a service, once you actually have your data into the cloud, it's very easy to use that data then to spin up critical workloads uh, in the cloud. So does your vendor offer the ability to do that? Um, can you spin up those critical workloads in the cloud? Can you do it for virtualized workloads as well as physical workloads? Um, those are uh, things to ask. Many vendors will do it, but only for uh, workloads that are running in a VMware environment. They cannot do it for a physical, uh, a physical window system, for example, uh, that's not virtualized. Um, does your vendor actually include services that focus not only on getting the individual VMs up and running, but that focuses on getting your entire business back up and running, uh, including kind of end-tier applications that have dependencies with networking and everything um, uh, uh, that, are, that are interconnected. Um, those end-tier applications uh, that have multiple databases and, um, and uh, UI and business logic servers are, are much more challenging to restore than a single VM. Does your vendor understand that? Are they able to restore those types of environments as well? Um, and last, um, as far as the questions um, that we're, we're, we're recommending that you ask, um, does your vendor support what we call recovery assurance? Um, recovery assurance is something that uses automated testing and reporting to validate your ability to recover with 100% confidence. In other words, it automates that what was previously a manual process of testing your backups, of testing your DR environment, it automates that so that, that those tests can run on a regular basis, once a day, once every few hours, once a week, whatever is required for your particular business. Um, does your vendor offer the ability to, to have recovery assurance uh, to guarantee that your business is going to be able to get back up and running no matter what? Uh, if they do have some sort of recovery assurance, um, are they able to do it simply for simple applications? Are they just validating that the VMs boot? Or are they actually testing complex, multi-tier applications at the functional level to validate that these applications are working uh, as expected? And are they able to deliver an automated report uh, to you that validates that these tests have been run, your, your backups, your DR environment is working exactly as you'd expect it, you're meeting your RPO and RTO objectives in actuality because we've actually tested it. Um, and we can prove uh, that things are working properly. Um, so those are just some of the questions that we, we think if you probe on your backup and recovery vendor, you'll start to see some of the differences that are, that are there. Um, there are different trade-offs uh, in, in cost and, and capabilities. Um, so we recommend uh, kind of pushing on some of those buttons as, as you go forth. Um, so I wanted to next just jump in and quickly kind of talk about the Unitrend solution before we take a, a few questions and answers. So um, why does Unitrends exist? You know, we exist because we want to ensure that our customers can protect their ideas and keep their businesses running no matter what. Whether it's a minor outage or a major disaster, we want to make sure your business stays up and running. We do that by providing what we think is the industry's broadest portfolio of cloud-empowered continuity solutions that are designed 
to give you absolute confidence in your ability to recover 100% of the time. We know that your, your applications, your data, your networks, your, everything that basically powers your business really is the lifeblood uh, of, of, of how you operate every day. And we're striving to actually build these solutions that are, uh, are, are going to be here for you today as well as kind of a pass forward tomorrow. What makes us unique is a few things. One, we're very scalable and flexible. We have multiple cloud solutions. We have our own cloud solution. We support uh, numerous hyperscale clouds uh, uh, and have the ability of protecting pretty much any of your assets, whether they're physical or virtual, um, both on-premise and, and in the cloud. Um, we have a very intuitive user interface. Uh, it's a simple uh, UI that we've built up over the past couple years um, that we strive to basically minimize the amount of clicks and the amount of effort it takes to actually do a backup task, to actually move your data uh, and set up a, a regular uh, a process to move backup copies into the cloud. Um, I highly recommend if you haven't seen our new user interface, we do we do regular demos. Um, go on our website, sign, sign up for one of those demos. Take a look at it. I think you'll be very very impressed with what what we actually have in there. Um, and we also deliver recovery assurance that automates that backup uh, and DR testing to make sure that your environment is always going to be fully recoverable no matter what. So we do this um, through both solutions that protect you on-premise through, through either physical or virtual backup appliances um, that have all sorts of great enterprise level features. Um, we have a fantastic adaptive uh, deduplication engine. We give you instant recovery for, for your virtualized workloads as well as your physical Windows uh, uh, workloads as well. Um, we do this at a price that is extremely cost competitive in, in the market. Um, but we also provide you with a full cloud offer uh, that includes uh, uh, our forever cloud um, and uh, our, our DRAS offer. So I wanted to basically talk just briefly about what the Unitrends cloud offer actually consists of. Um, so we actually have um, our own cloud, uh, which is essentially a cloud storage and DRAS offer. Um, we have data centers in five countries around the globe, uh, including the US, UK, Germany, Canada, and Australia. Uh, and we're currently uh, protecting over uh, 10 petabytes of customer data in that cloud. Um, that cloud, the main component of it is something we call Forever Cloud. Um, Forever Cloud charges uh, essentially 10 cent per protected gigabyte per month with infinite ret retention. What we mean by that is you only pay for the amount of data you are going to protect uh, locally. You don't pay for the amount of cloud storage uh, that, that you're consuming in the cloud. So if you can get very granular on how much you want to move to the cloud. If you have 10 terabytes of data, but you only want to store and protect one terabyte of that with long-term retention in the cloud, you only have to pay for one terabyte uh, of, of, of uh, Forever Cloud. Um, on top of Forever Cloud, we have the ability to spin up um, virtualized and Windows workloads in the Unitrends DRAS offer as well. Um, that DRAS offer comes with uh, a one-hour SLA um, for, for getting your entire business back up and running. Um, and we also are able to do this completely with our recovery assurance technology as well, so that we can prove without a shadow of doubt that you're gonna be able to recover, that your backup that, that's being stored in the cloud is good, that your DR uh, environment and all the applications there are functioning exactly as you'd expect. So as I said, Forever Cloud is focused on long-term retention. And we will actually store multiple copies of your data in our cloud for that one low price. So you only pay for that, that one terabyte that you want to protect in the example I gave. Um, as, and we will, we will store a set of daily, weekly, monthly, and an infinite number of yearly backups um, for as long as you, as, as you stay with uh, Unitrends Forever Cloud. 
your price never goes up. That monthly charge stays the same. Um, it only goes up if the amount of data that you're protecting goes up. Um, so if your environment goes up or the amount of data you want to move to the cloud goes up, then, then you, pay, you pay more for that. But you're not going to pay more because over time the cloud storage um, used uh, grows over time. That's all built into how the service operates. And if you look at uh, Forever Cloud compared to some of the hyperscale offers that are out there, and we support moving backup copies to Google, moving backup copies to Amazon. So if you want to use those, those environments, we support that as well. Um, but with Unitrends, you get physical seeding. You get that data ship in SLA, kind of the reverse seeding. You get a white glove service where somebody's there 24-7 to work with you. You can add D, uh, uh, DR spin up through our DRAS offer. You can, you can use recovery assurance in our offer. Uh, and there's no additional fees for network egress or, or data access. Um, so it's a very competitive solution. Um, even though the initial price per gigabyte is higher than what you would get strictly by going to a hyperscale cloud, um, over time, and that time is very short, within a few months, this actually can wind up being a more cost-effective solution for you uh, in addition to providing more capabilities. Um, because this is a cloud that is built purpose-built for backup and recovery. It's not just a generic infrastructure as a service offer for storage. Um, the Unitrends Cloud is, is built exactly for the purpose of protecting your, your data and systems. As I said, we do support a cloud seeding option um, to, to allow you to create that first data set in the cloud. Um, we also support kind of the reverse seeding, the data shipment, to get your data back. Uh, to make sure you retain a, a, a low RTO as well. Um, I mentioned earlier that we do have a disaster recovery as a service offer um, where the data you keep on, prem, on premise is moved into the cloud. Um, once it's in the cloud, we can then use that data to um, recover your critical VMs, whether they're Hyper-V Hyper or VMware or, or physical Windows systems. They can be restored into the Unitrends cloud um, uh, so that your business can, can, uh, can recover very rapidly. We provide a one-hour SLA for the entire environment. So regardless of whether you have two VMs with us or 30, we will get that entire environment back up and running uh, in less than one hour using our white glove uh, service um, so that you can have absolute confidence that your business is not going to have a long-term outage regardless of what happens. In addition to that, to give you extra confidence that things are working properly, our recovery assurance technology is available both on-premise as well as in our cloud. So you can have absolute certainty in your ability to recover. Um, the way, uh, uh, the, probably the most important aspect of recovery assurance is the report that we deliver to you that proves that your environment is working exactly as expected. So you work with our ops team to basically specify what your RPO uh, and RTO targets would be on a per application basis. And then we validate in a sandbox without having any impact in your production environment that your um, RPO and RTO actual are exceeding what your target actually is. Uh, so in this case, you can see we have a bunch of applications uh, uh, apps with uh, RTOs of 30 minutes and RPOs of one day, and we validated that you know we're well within. Most of those are recovering within of just a few minutes. Um, so you can be absolutely confident that when you need to rely on that environment, it's going to work exactly as it, as you'd expect it to. Um, so this is a, a very useful feature to deliver some peace of mind uh, to our customers. So with that, I think I'm going to wrap up. We're going to turn this over, um, bring Kevin back in. We're going to do some questions and answers. Um, before we do that, just want to uh, point out a few things um, that I invite you to go look at the Unitrends website. We actually do have a, a, a limited time offer right now where um, World Backup Day is coming up at the end of the month on the 31st. We have a special offer now um, to deliver uh, some, some free forever cloud to new for customers that actually uh, uh, buy uh, in the next couple of weeks. Um, you can also go and um, sign up for uh, 
and, and, and get a free trial of our, uh, of our backup software, Unitrends Enterprise Backup. Um, or you can sign up. We'd love to actually just have a talk with you. You can sign up. Um, if uh, our salespeople engage you in a conversation, we'll actually pay you 50 bucks to actually have that 15-minute conversation with us. So I um, invite you to go to the website, take advantage of those offers uh, if you're interested in learning more. Um, and with that, I think I'm going to turn things back over to Kevin and see if we have any questions uh, that people have from the presentation today. Sounds good. Thanks, Dave. That was a great presentation. Uh, we had a few questions come in, but just a reminder, if you have a question, please type it into the Q&A box in the bottom right-hand corner of the, the platform, and we'll get started. Um, we had a few questions around how do I know if I have su sufficient bandwidth to move my backups to the cloud? So Roberto and a few others asked ask that same question. Yeah, it's a very common question that we get when we do these cloud things. Um, and it's also a challenging answer give a challenging thing to give a specific answer on. So what I'm going to do is I'll, I'll give you a little bit of kind of guidance. Um, and the reason why it's a challenge is because there are a lot of variables that go into that. How much data do you actually have? Um, what's your change rate? Because that's going to drive exactly how much data we have to send kind of on a daily basis or an hourly basis or however often we're going to basically replicate data to the cloud. A lot of that's going to be driven by your change rate. So um, what we tend to tell people as a starting point, and this is a starting point, because you do have to kind of measure and figure out what your specific data and your environment uh, is going to, going to uh, imply, um, is if you, if you look at about a terabyte of data um, and you have a change rate of, let's say, 2%, uh, that terabyte is probably going to require about 2 megabits um, uh, of bandwidth um, to actually do kind of normal cloud backups. That's kind of a good general rule of thumb. If, you're, if your change rate is more like 5%, you know, that's going to go up. Um, you know, uh, so 2%, 2 megabits kind of for a terabyte. You know, if you have 10 terabytes and a change rate of 8%, you know, that number is going to go up pretty dramatically uh, as to how fat of a pipe you need to have. But that's generally where we kind of start the conversation um, and then uh, – try and work with customers um, to uh, help establish exactly uh, um, what this is going to look like for their particular environment as we do the installation to make sure that they have sufficient coverage. So kind of just a general general rule of thumb, um, but uh, as they say, your mileage may vary. <laughs> Thanks. We've got a, a question that came in from Jared. Does the cloud piece support multi-tenant? Does the cloud piece support – well, our, our, our cloud essentially is multi-tenant. Um, so um, Unitrends is – obviously, we're, we're running a massive instance with, with 100 petabytes – sorry, 10 petabytes of, uh, of, of data in it. Um, if you're asking as an MSP um, or as a service provider who's looking to build a cloud offer for their customers to support multi-tenancy, yes, that can be done as well. Um, so uh, uh, not quite sure if, if uh, you have a specific instance, I, I'd invite you to uh, sign up. We'll have it we'll, uh, for that 50 for 15. We'll have a, a detailed chat on exactly what your scenario is. Um, but, uh, yeah, if, if, you, if you look at the Unitrends cloud, we're doing pretty massive multi-tenancy <laughs> in, in that cloud today. Okay. Can you provide more details on exactly what you mean by protected data when it comes to the cloud pricing? Yeah. So what we mean by that is a lot – if you, uh, I'm, I'm going to answer it by kind of talking about what we used to do and what a lot of other cloud vendors actually do, a lot of other cloud backup vendors do. A lot of other cloud backup vendors look at your entire environment and say, you have um, – you know, 10 terabytes of data, therefore I'm going to replicate all that data into the cloud and charge you 10 terabytes. Um, and we used to do that, and we actually still have an offer called No Limits Cloud that actually does that. Whenever you actually have, including your, um, your retention uh, that's on your local appliance, we replicate that into the cloud. It's almost like DR for your backup appliance. Um, that's a common scenario. With Forever Cloud, we decided not to do that. We 
we're talking with a lot of customers who said, I have a lot of data. I want to protect that data locally um, so that I can do a quick uh, restore if someone deletes a file or if I have a VM fail or, you know, server fry. But I don't need to have cloud backup for long-term retention for all of it. I only have a smaller subset. Um, so I may have, you know, 50 VMs, you know, and, and terabytes worth of data. You know, only five of those VMs that have 500 gigabytes worth of data is what I actually need to protect. So what we do is we look at what are you actually protecting in your production environment, um, not what you're storing in the cloud, not what your entire protected environment that, that your uh, Unitrends environment is protecting, just specifically the amount of data that you want to protect in the cloud. Um, and generally it's going to be done, you know, on a per VM basis uh, or on a per, per workload basis. Uh, you calculate that out, um, and, and that's what your protected data is. Forever Cloud is built in 500 gigabyte chunks. Um, so if you have two terabytes, essentially, you know, you're going to buy four or 500 gigabyte chunks of protected data. Um, because of that granularity, it does allow people to, to kind of reduce their cloud spend. Um, they generally don't have to spend as much on cloud as what they originally thought when they come to and look at our, our, our Unitrend solution. Um, and that's either allowed them to um, add more data and actually protect more data in the cloud or add additional capabilities. And they start looking at, well, maybe not only will I do the cloud backup, maybe I'll actually do DRAS as well. Um, so that's an interesting trend that we've been seeing as a result of somewhat of the unique pricing that we're doing with Forever Cloud, just charging for the amount of protected data in your production environment, not based on what you're doing in the cloud. Okay, we've got a couple more questions and then we'll wrap it up. Uh, does Unitrend support NAS backup? Do we support NAS backup? Uh, y yes. Um, a couple different ways of go going about doing, doing it, but short answer is yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and last question. Are there other certifications that should be looked at for specific vertical markets? Um, yes, there are. Um, you know, if you're, for example, um, in healthcare, there are um, HIPAA requirements um, where in order to be HIPAA compliant, you may need to, you, you will need to actually have your cloud vendor provide what's called uh, uh, a business, uh, um, what is it, it's like a, a BAA, it's a business authorized associate or something like that. Um, which basically ties the cloud kind of into uh, the HIPAA compliance. There are others as well um, for payment uh, card, you know, PCI and, and, and things. So in many cases, you, what you'll find is clouds may actually be, um, be either compliant or certified. Uh, in many cases, you're, you're compliant um, because your technology meets all the needs, but you may not have actually gone through and actually gotten the certificate, you know, paid the fees to actually be certified in that environment. Um, so there are a number of them. You know, there are, there's some for, uh, you know, working with the U.S. government and U.S. military. Um, there's those in the financial institutions and in healthcare. Um, there are a number of them that are out there. Excellent. Well, thanks, Dave. We're just about out of time, so.